Howdy and hello, I'm Doe, hope you're doing good. With the PS5 bug being fixed, it's time to buff the railgun. I have some ideas to that, but first, buff the railgun? Yes, it's terrible. I can explain that objectively in a moment, but first, I want to go over some numbers real quick. Here we have the Quasar Cannon, the replacement for railgun against the bugs. And that makes sense. Two-shot Bile Titans, before railgun could do that with a bug, but it was happening all the time, so people assumed it was cannon. Literally. Then it could two-shot like armor on chargers. This could one-shot chargers. And time to kill, it's not necessarily the same, but it's relative here. 16 seconds if you are firing back to back to back. Perfectly. For two shots. Railgun takes 2.4 seconds for the first charge, but the reload makes it four seconds total. Accounting for that, two shots is seven seconds roughly, three shots, 11, and so on and so forth. Just add around four seconds for each extra shot. I think that five shots would be a good benchmark to kill Battle Titans, if nothing else changed. Right now, it's 10 to 20. Just saying. So, why is Railgun bad? Well, the only thing you really do good is kill Devastators, Marauders slash Berserkers, whatever they're called, the guys with chainsaws, and Hulks in one shot. And for the Hulks, you don't have to charge to max meter. You go slightly above safe to get armor pin, shoot them in the red visor, one tap, they're done. That's good. And that's where it stops with the automatons. On the bug side, you can one shot basically everything below chargers and bow titans. The less than ideal aspects of railgun involve the charger and charging. You can't see your charge meter well unless you're in first person view, which I don't think is that good for railgun to begin with. And even then, it's hard to see what the meter's at. And for the chargers, you need to have two max charge shots to strip the armor and reveal thine chicken wing and then pump it with your primary weapon. You can kill it in three max charge shots to the face, but all the while, you basically have to be in first person view or memorize the timing or blow your gun up and wait seven minutes, if not longer, for the cooler to come back up. Choice is yours. And I don't mind it blowing up, but the reward isn't there. And that's extremely prevalent when you view the really bad category for railgun which is everything else i haven't listed bile titans take 10 max charge shots sometimes 20 or 24 based on where you're shooting factory striders 20 ish max charge shots when aiming for the weak spot the undercarriage then gunships those things take at least 10 max charge shots in my experience but then again i don't play against them that much because why would i want to use railgun when instead i can use the laser cannon amr auto cannon they're not great against the Bile Titans, sure, but neither is the Railgun. They are amazing against everything on the Automaton side. Tanks. I didn't even label tanks! Turns out tanks take 10 max charge shots, but tanks also turn, making it take 10 years to kill it with the Railgun. It's roughly 40 seconds of uninterrupted firing and charging if you can manage that, which, shocker alert, you probably can't in most situations. Going back to what I was saying, the AMR auto cannon, laser cannon can handle everything the automatons can throw at you. And sometimes it can even do things like objectives, which the railgun, <laughs> it can't do. You can't even break a spore spewer in a meaningful time frame. It takes you seven max charge shots for a spore spewer. What? Then you have the shrieker nest. That takes you even more shots, even though it is a armored obstacle. And the railgun is labeled as a experimental weapon that specializes in heavy armor penetration. That was a lie. All of that should paint the picture. The railgun probably isn't ideal, but who knows? Now, how do we improve the weapon? The first option, make it a primary weapon. And you can change nothing about it and it'd be a pretty good primary weapon, but still have downfalls. There's basically no horde clear ability for this primary. That, that matters. And if you take a flamethrower and a railgun, you can't kill the bigger enemies that well unless you use your other stratagems. Now you could change it to where it can't go through Hulk's visor, so lowering the armor penetration level. If you do that, make it so it can go through more enemies. Increase the enemy penetration amount. At the moment, it can do that, but only for light enemies. If you shoot a Wilbur and the shot goes through it and hits a hive guard, it doesn't kill the hive guard or damage it. It just ricochets off. Make it so it keeps, make it a medium armor pin weapon and it can go through all medium units in a line. Second idea, allow Railgun to make openings in enemy armor with max charge shots. One max charge shot is an opening big enough for a primary weapon to do some decent damage. Two max charge shots, it's barely big enough for a well-placed anti-tank shot to do insane damage. It's like the max damage it does right now to a weak spot. I think that opens the window for a lot of fun for a lot of people. 
It makes it more team oriented and team play centered, which is great. And it gives me the ability to kill battle titans in a reasonable fashion without making the railgun do the one doing all the hard work. It could be two railgun shots, maybe three, and then an anti tank such as the eat it. And boom, I can kill battle titans and not feel useless. I can kill chargers and not feel. For chargers, it'd be less than it'd be one max charge shot. It depends on the level of the armor, and that would determine how big of a hole you made or an opening you made. Idea number three, give us a charge bar above our stamina meter. That way I can see what's going on even in third person and not be forced to go first person to charge to a meaningful level. Or give us a sound cue or give it a very distinct different color to make it more easy to see when you aren't in first person. Give safe mode a reason to exist and unsafe mode the high risk high reward archetype it's supposed to have. For safe mode, give it more damage and a bit more armor pin and make it so the charge rate is either the same it is right now or slightly increased. Safe mode should be safe, but not that effective. Still good though. Unsafe mode needs to charge a lot faster, have more damage and potentially more armor penetration. That way it fills the high risk, high reward archetype. Because if the faster it charges, the more difficult it is to keep from blowing up in your hands. No pause. The fourth idea, and probably the final one, is to make Rogan do good damage. What does that mean though, number wise? If you change nothing else about it, but just make the damage higher, it should take you roughly four to five safe shots to kill a charger in the face. Two to three to strip the armor. In unsafe mode, one max charge shot to leg armor and two max charge shots to the face of a charger. For battle titans, safe mode, we'll say six to seven to the face. For max charge shots though, it should be four to five. It's still a crazy investment. Landing five shots and in the perfect scenarios, it takes 20 seconds roughly. You don't always get time to shoot five shots uninterrupted. That's a decent investment, no? Then for tanks, front facing, safe mode, you probably shouldn't be able to penetrate that armor. From the side though, it should take you roughly seven, it should be like the same for Battle Titans, but just on the, si the side of a tank and the back of a tank for safe mode. For max charge shots, you should be able to go through the front armor and take six to seven shots with no other damage being done to a tank. From the side though, it'd be the same as Battle Titans as well. And Hulk's unchanged. One shot, barely any charge for the max charge for the max mode. And safe for Hulk should be two shots to the visor. I think that makes more sense, no? And then factory striders, if you shoot in the eyeball, I believe four to five max charge shots. Because it's way longer of a time investment than shooting currently it's six auto cannon shots to the eyeball of a factory strider. And it's roughly five to six for the undercarriage. The too long didn't listen recap. Railgun is terrible and needs to be buffed in some way or fashion. Many things you can change, but something needs to happen and it should be relatively powerful given the high risk high reward. That's the recap. Now folks saying skill issue, just get good. You don't know how to use a weapon. Sure. You caught me, bro. You go ahead and show me how it's used R real quick. Just pretty please post a video and let me see how it's done. Cause <laughs> I don't know, man. People assume I'm not using the gun in unsafe mode, which blows my mind. I'm charging it to almost the point it explodes practically every shot. And that's not uh, that's not unsafe mode to some of y'all. It's it's safe mode. We have a whole community full of people that don't know how the game functions, which is fine, but they also freak out and complain. They also freak out and go crazy over the idea of something being good and meta. Meanwhile, they don't even know how it works. And this causes the devs to also freak out because people are increasing the stats of weapons by using them crazy like, even when they're probably not doing the best job with them. Rogan was too easy, so that's a different story. And it's just, it's ridiculous, man. We had a bug cause a weapon to become useless and there's been no talk about changing it. Although they may change it quickly, we'll see. If it takes a few months, I'll be a little peeved, but we'll find out what happens. And for folks that may say, just get over it. Use other weapons. I do. But riddle me this, Batman. Is it not a great idea to have as many support weapons be useful as possible? That way players have options and thus variety to make the game more fun. Because to me, what's fun about games is using different things and engaging with the content in different ways. That keeps it fresh. That keeps it enjoyable. It makes it so you have different things to learn and improve at. And that is the in-game content for me in games that don't have end games to begin with. Or even if they do, that's just the in-game content on top of the in-game content. 
But for some reason, that is a foreign idea to so many people. I can't even count how many comments I had on Tiki Talk saying things such as, once you get level 50 or unlock all the weapons, you'll have nothing else to do. Yeah, sure, if I have no critical thought whatsoever, no agency over my own enjoyment, no want to progress in the game, then yeah, I'll be bored because the arbitrary timers have run out of time. The tickers are out of ticks. Oh, you're level 50. Now it's time to uninstall the game. And now it'd be 150 because they increased the level cap. That's just such a weird way of viewing games. That reminds me of a few Hellbavers 2 balance philosophies that I think make zero sense. And they go against the entirety of what makes the game fun in the first place, but that's for a whole different time. Anywho, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Peace.